the World Wrestling Federation. For over 50 years, the revolutionary force in sports entertainment. Woo! Woo, yeah! The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Money isn't everything, it's the only thing. And everyone, everyone has a price for the million dollar man. <laughs> Shut that control into a nosedive, Hulk Hogan. Will you stop? All right, let's go over to Sean Mooney. And what's you gonna do when Hulkamania destroy you? Ooh, yeah, get ready to freak out, freak out, because that's what the Retro Route table is all about. That's right, it's your boy Kenny Killer, bringing it to you once a month on a Saturday, giving you your nostalgia hit. That's right, it is the Retro Round Table episode 15, and I would like to introduce you to my partner in crime on this Saturday. It is none other than Michael Cook. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> the, cook, ah. <laughs> the cookie cutter podcaster himself does it again now oh. people we have great guests we have amazing guests now you know whenever me and these guys are in the same bloody on the same mic or whatever you want to call it it just all hell breaks loose whether it's hornitos involved or tequila whatever it is 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 quite crazy so let me introduce you to gates and dave it is None other than the host of Attitude of Aggression podcast, Gates and Dave. We saying, boys. What is going on, man? We got Stone Cold Steve Austin sitting there with it. Well, goddamn, boys, what's happening over there in the UK? <laughs> We're cracking through in the morning over here on the west coast of the United States, and it's a pleasure to be with y'all. Hey, ho! Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> oh, crack a lack, and we got energy drinks going down. It's gonna be a good time, yeah, Jenny. Oh Nobody wants to know what's really going on here. So it's <laughs> no, no. Time. Let's um, let's just try and keep that PG. Oh, maybe not. It's the Retro Round Table. This ain't WWE Raw. Come on now. Jeez. <laughs> well, nevertheless, Cookie, you know how we do once a month on a Saturday. We, it's a retro round table, so we do look at old school pay-per-view. So, Cookie, which pay-per-view are we looking at today? The 1994 Royal Rumble. Ah, you just got to love it. You just got to love it. Um, I mean, all the antics aside, <laughs> we will get to um, what happens when, when you kick my leg out of my leg. But, um, yeah, you, <laughs> you know what time it is. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man, let's get into it anyway. Um, Sunday Segway, obviously, pretense retro roundtable. Make sure you check out the website, Sunday Segway. Um, podcast.wix.com also follow us on twitter that's at sunday segway segway spelled s-e-g-u-e um subscribe to our facebook like us on youtube we're on itunes podomatic and don't forget to download that double twist player player right so you know what we do right at the beginning of the show hit it mcmahon Now, we got McMahon, but before we got McMahon, we got some kind of 90s techno funk tune <laughs> intro in the show. I don't know if you had that on, 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 net, on the network, Cookie. 
Yeah, we had that we're go- going through the streets and Yokozuna's and the Undertaker's face would show up on two buildings and all that. And that's, that's what I got from it. <laughs> um, guys, did you watch it on the network, Dave, um, David Gates? Yeah, we watched it the other night. I think Gates was watching it again early after we, we just recorded episode 49 of our show last night. And so Gates was up trying to watch the rest of it. And uh, But yeah, we saw it the other night on the network. Uh, it, it, it's as good as I remember it, that's for sure. <laughs> well, m- man, um, no Heenan, obviously, um, Gates, because Heenan's gone. Um, you know, that's a m- shame. M- Monsoon kicked his ass out of the back door. But um, yeah, it was. it is a shame, um, as you can probably tell on this pay-per-view. But instead, we get Million Dollar Man, Ted Tibiasi. What was your thoughts when you seen this rascal walk out? Uh, just, uh, just a lot of pain and shame, Kenny, <laughs> a lot, of, a lot of pain and shame. I mean, it was kind of rough because he comes out there and I mean, you're going to see the theme throughout this Royal Rumble is he's just kind of desperately trying to put his character over and McMahon is just kind of not biting on any of it. <laughs> and me and Dave noticed at the beginning of this million dollar man comes out and he's bragging about his money and he goes, you should be working for me, McMahon. <laughs> And McMahon, and McMahon briefly breaks kayfabe and goes, well, that's a laugh. And just from there, it's just like, man, this is going to get rough real just, quickly. You just got bitched down, Ted. So <laughs> time to, time you got bitched down retreat. within minutes of hitting the freaking mic. Uh, but you know what? All joking aside, I mean, he, he, you know, he was serviceable. He was serviceable. He came out cookie and he got booed. <laughs> like, he oh. got booed so horribly, which is obviously nice as a heel. Oh yeah, he does his job right, and it's. Uh, I think it was his first time back since uh, SummerSlam, so uh, I thought he was going to come back and wrestle, but because uh, you didn't know at the time that he was injured, so coming back as a commentator was a bit weird. I thought. <laughs> Uh, but nevertheless, he, you know, he has his banter, just like Gates said, you know, trying to run down McMahon. He's like, how dare you? Um, but yeah, um, as we get into it, first match was Tatanka. Um, yay! Um, versus. Uh, that, was, uh, that was really that was good. That was pretty damn good. <laughs> that was good. Well, why, thank you. <laughs> well, uh, versus um, the beast from the East, Big Bam Bam. Um, he comes out cookie with Luna Vachon. Oh, how yeah. pretty. How pretty is she? Yeah. Oh, it's gorgeous. She's hot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Miss <Tough> Fish Stratus. Oh. <laughs> Miss Octavia, whatever that means. <laughs> She's a looker, man. She's oh, a looker. Man. Uh, his main, the, his main sque- with. I can't believe Fink actually has to say that with his main squeeze, Luna for sure. <laughs> Poor Fink. They, they were desperate, Kenny. They were desperate for something at that point. Oh, uh, the Sheik says fucking bullshit. Um, <laughs> so straight off the bat, um, Dave, <laughs> straight off the bat, Bam Bam goes for a splash, misses. Um, but Bam Bam, man, I mean, this guy was surprising me with his. Uh, you know, agile, agile on this for a big guy. I mean, Bam Bam was busting drop kicks. Um, <laughs> he was going crazy. Yeah, Bam Bam was. Uh, I mean, and, and the funny thing is, there was definite. You know, this is kind of resumption of their feud that got interrupted because Tatanka was, you know, uh, going at it with Ludwig Borga, and then Borga got hurt, and they subbed Bam Bam in for this match. But yeah, I mean, Bam Bam was always real, real agile, and we noticed in this uh, match he looked a bit lighter than I've normally seen him. He looked like he dropped some weight, but yeah, he tries. Doesn't he try the moon salt at the end, and he just flat out misses, and <laughs> Tatanka capitalizes and gets the win. But yeah, I mean, Bam Bam's one of these guys, kind of like Vader, real big, kind of like Yokozuna actually, really big and a lot more agile than one would normally think. So, I yeah. mean, you know, there's pretty decent match, nothing too spectacular. Uh, you know, with Tatanka, I don't know if you're going to get anything too spectacular. So, no, hey, can... how about how about when Tatanka does his freaking rain dance at the end and he's rallying back? <laughs> and <laughs> I know what you're going to say. And freaking Bam Bam just completely squashes it with the with the freaking uh, insecurity. insecurity right to the back of the head. Just beautiful. Oh, uh, Cookie, look. These these moves, right? Now, Bam Bam is a big guy, and I'm rolling out these moves. Drop kicks, insecurity, moonsault. What the fuck? This guy should not be doing that stuff. Imagine if you bust the corner, and you're ready to fight this guy, and this guy starts climbing up on a wall, ready to give you a moonsault. You would shit a brick, mate. Oh, this should, this should be stuff that Rey Mysterio does. <laughs> not, not, not a big guy like that. <laughs> but... Uh... Wasn't didn't Bam Bam look f- uh, fresh faced with his uh, 
because he had a sh- he, had, he seemed to have a shave as well. Didn't he? <laughs> so he looked yeah. lighter and he looked fresh. Shave going on. <laughs> he got a little shave. He had kind of a fresh cut going, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. By God, he looked younger in 1994 than he did in '88. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Amazing. God. Amazing. Um, but I mean, there was a long, long bear hug by um Bam Bam on um Tatanka, and I was about to switch off on that. I thought, oh, oh, okay, here, here comes, here comes uh, Tatanka hulking up, and like you said, the insecurity hit him in the dome, um, and that ended that. Um, but yeah, like you it said, dome rocked him. <laughs> Like you said, Gates, um, um, the you know it finished when uh, Bam Bam tried to go for a top rope moon, so um, he missed it. Uh, then um, Tatanka hit the top rope himself, top rope cross body for the one, two, three. Imagine that, um, Samoan drop is his finish. Imagine that as your finisher, just a Samoan drop or even a top rope cross body, and it's a one, two, three. You know, imagine if someone did that in 2015. <laughs> uh, I would, I would appreciate it because it wouldn't be so damn predictable and vanilla. True. That's- that's true. Yeah, it, it, it would be something different. But yeah, I mean, unless you're Ricky Steamboat, that 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 move just needs to be put in the uh, the back of the repertoire, so to speak. <laughs> um, and all right, next, uh, Cookie. What we had was Bret Hart and Owen uh, versus the Quebecers. Now, Cookie, do as you do best. Please give us the backstory. Well, it started from Survivor Series when the sh- the stupid Hart family. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, uh, <laughs> Especially Keith and uh, what was it, Bruce? They shouldn't have been in that much to begin with. But anyways, uh, Owen had a, Owen and Brett had a little uh, pushing and shoving going on. So but Owen challenged Brett. Brett says, without a shadow of a doubt, I'm turning him down. I will not not fight him. So Owen just thought, all right, and and just come back together with him. <laughs> but there's a good uh, uh, backstage uh, like promo in, on like a superstars or something where. Owen's saying, this is my first chance at the at the tag team titles and Bret Hart will be following me from behind. And I thought, <laughs> I thought oh, it's, it's the little things like this that is making that him. He's an actual heel here. Mm-hmm. But he's just pretending that he's, he's still with uh, Bret Hart. I saw the promo and he's like, yeah, I'm going to claw him on my back. I'm going to take him along with me because I'm yeah. the leader of the team. <laughs> and Bret just like oh. sucked it up. A lot of up. delusional stuff there, that's for sure. Well, it was a far cry from the promo he um they did before the actual match. I mean, um Owen seemed like proper babyface. He was like, "Yeah, me and my brother, we're gonna do it. We're gonna win the title. I'm gonna do it for you, Brett." And I was just like, "Oh, okay, that's a massive difference from what you were saying like a week ago on Superstars." Um, but yeah, nev- yeah nevertheless, um, um, Dave, um, out comes the Quebecers with fucking Raven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what we said. That's Johnny exactly Polo. Said. Said, Johnny Polo. I said, in that Raven? And, and Gates is like, yeah, that's Raven. <laughs> Can you believe that? The Quebecers with Johnny Polo, a.k.a. Raven. <laughs> yep, that's my dad. <laughs> that's what my dad was doing in 1994. It, was that your dad? That was, yeah. That's All my. Right. That's where the beer drinking and the energy drinks come from. <laughs> what, because that's your dad? <laughs> yeah, because Johnny Polo. You know, it's good, you know, good genetic makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got the, the long wavy curls like he does? <laughs> Oh, bro, I'm sporting the long wave, you curls. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and, wearing a, and wearing a secondhand uh, Hawaiian shirt right now. And a cardigan sweater over the top of that. So it's bad. It's rough, man. It's oh, rough, guys. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah that he borrowed from Captain Lou Albano. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and man. he's throwing a flower in his belly button, too. So it's all good. <laughs> You know, haters gonna hate, Kenny. Yeah. Haters no, gonna no hate. No haters in Mex America. <laughs> no. <Definitely. laughs> yeah, they, they happen to all be in England, apparently. Oh god. Apparently. Um. Well, I mean, Cookie, I love this feud, man. This whole storyline. I mean, this went on for years. This went on for absolute years. Um. And the storytelling was great. The way it started at Survivor Series with this whole family thing, and you know, Owen saying that you know he needs to. Um, step out of his brother's shadow and you know he's the king of all of this it was just amazing oh it was really good and just having them split to begin with and then like reconcile for a short time that, that really added to the story i thought and and owen hart's desperate need to become a champion and bret hart doesn't doesn't tag him why did you just <laughs> Dag me. <laughs> but you're too damn selfish. Oh, we'll, we'll get to that. Don't worry. We'll get to that. I'm trying to build this ish up. But um, 
Ted DiBiase, though, Dave, I thought Ted DiBiase was great here as a heel commentator um, in, yeah. you know, um, match building and building up the, sorry, building up the tension. I, I agree. And I think that Ted did a great job as kind of foreshadowing how the match would play out, kind of criticizing Owen for not uh, doing certain things and not going out on his own and marching to his own drum, criticizing Brett for not making the tag. And uh, I, I mean, everything in this match played out perfectly to push this feud to where it needed to go uh because owen was relatively you know brett behind the scenes the backstory of that you know brett was trying to get vince to really give owen a push because owen was thinking about quitting and being a firefighter if memory serves me correctly oh wow and and so you know this whole thing i mean and, and when owen does that interview with with uh, vince where he's challenging brett he says i got to prove to myself to everybody looks at vince to you and I was like, yeah, that there's there's a little bit of a, a mm -hmm. reality being brought into that whole situation. But I agree that Ted DiBiase, for most of this pay-per-view, is only serviceable. But the job he does here with the Owen hart Bret Hart match, uh, really standout work by Ted in this respect. And it really adds something to where this ends up, especially after Owen does make this heel turn. And Ted DiBiase just sits there and claps at the end of this thing. <laughs> so it's great <laughs> stuff. Cookie, could you only imagine if it was Heenan in his place doing this? <laughs> oh, that, match. that would that would be perfect. It would it would just bad mouth and Owen all the way through the match. You, you can imagine, and then as soon as he kicks him, he goes, "What a great guy that is! <laughs> oh, is that fantastic? I knew he was a great guy." It just like reminds me of the Rockers um at the barbershop and he's like, "They're the Rockers. They'll always be together." Sweet chin music by HBK. Oh, I, I knew, knew he was gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Gates. Um, now building up Owen Hart was so key in this feud so key because Owen Hart was you know sparsely used throughout you know the years you know blue blazer yada 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 um you know fucking high energy in their pajamas and all that shit um but i mean it was so key and um i think they did it so good in so many different ways like um <laughs> especially um you know in his you know in the math in these kind of matches um now could you imagine what it would have been like if um they didn't put so much emphasis on uh, Owen Hart turning and the slow burn they did with him. It was something – It was the slow burn was definitely necessary because, I mean, the Hearts really didn't have too much – they didn't really have too much soap opera elements uh, to their storyline. There, you know, wasn't – they didn't really need some creative, you know, backstage juiciness or anything like that. These guys were just wrestlers. They were competitive. Um, they were – you know, the Hart family was always striving to perfect its craft. So, you know, they had to slow burn this to make it interesting. Like Owen Hart, you know, is uh, is living in the shadow, is living in the shadow of his brother. But he's, you know, performing well. He's working his way up the ranks. So, I mean, yeah, they, they had to slow burn this. I think that was the only way to do it, um, given the nature of, you know, these guys character. Uh, back to the Bobby the Brain Heenan thing, though, is I love how Bobby the Brain Heenan always thought because of this nature of the Hart family that they were just the lamest motherfuckers on the planet. <laughs> uh, when Cookie was talking about the whole Hart family and calling them the stupid Hart family, was that the match where the was that the match where all four of them were in a tag team together? Yeah. The 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 parents were at the side and yeah. Heenan was yeah. just yeah. Stu's, Stu's yeah. got his Boston Bruins jacket on. It's just <laughs> you know, and then, and then they're talking about all the kids and, and Bobby the Brain Heenan goes, oh, you mean one of each just absolutely it just absolutely fan just absolutely fantastic um oh, i wish heenan was there but no I, I agree kenny they they had to they had to slow burn uh the owen hart angle uh you know just given the nature of his character he was completely ring based and his entire character was just based on perfecting his craft and surpassing his brother or at least breaking out of that shadow i love the way that they used um babyface tactics in terms of in his matches to get him over before turning him heel because obviously he's he's got that rawlins move set you know he's got that rawlins move set that everyone kind of loved oh, of you know course. the high flying and stuff and then turn him which was you know which was perfect um one yeah. thing i didn't like dave right was how the fuck did the quebecers get <laughs> Listen, how the fuck did the Corbettas get to beat the shit out of um, <laughs> Bret Hart? Tim White is just standing there like, I'm just going to count this motherfucker. I'm just going to stand here and count yeah, Bret Hart yeah. and watch him take an absolute... Look, fucking Jacques <laughs> Rougeau picked up a chair <laughs> right, and was hitting Bret Hart right in front of Tim White's face. Come on now. Oh, I need yeah. You picked up uh, the, um, Johnny Polo's, like, well, Polo. <laughs> yeah, it's Polo. He's going to use that now. 
man. Uh, I yeah, think. I mean, there's there's a lot. That, let's just say Tim White uh, gave a lot of leniency in this match because there could have been a 40 count. Yeah, I was about to say, how long that count out? And they just didn't do it. And, and yeah, there's plenty of basis for disqualification. But it's like, I don't know. This was before Tim got wiped out in that Hell in the Cell match, but oh. you'd never know it. You would yeah. think that this was this is right after that because, yeah, some of the stuff that he turns a blind eye to is just like, wow, what the hell are you doing? But Dave, what about what about Bret Hart selling that knee? Well, no, Bre- I mean, and we're Bret when you Hart, and I were watching. I thought he like legitimately was injured. No, Bret Hart sold the shit out of that injury, <laughs> and he made he made it seem like you know, and, and then Owen kind of is is he's concerned up until the point where he realizes he's going to lose his shot at the tag title. So he just froze his brother in. <laughs> yeah, then he doesn't give a shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, my brother's hurt. He may have a shredded knee. He's like Seth Rollins' knee on the floor. I'm going to throw him back in the ring. You know, so, yeah, that's that. there were some um, some interesting uh, tactics employed by Owen in that match. But, but you know, the thing is, you, you also have to remember, this is 1994, so Bret Hart was not the dominant or you know superstar that he eventually turned into. Vince still wasn't exactly sold on him, which is why he put the belt back on Hogan at WrestleMania 9. So there's a lot of uh, people pr- trying to prove themselves at this point in time, which is also what made this feud so compelling. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, yeah, Owen had to escape from his brother's shadow, but honestly, Brett's shadow wasn't that big yet. Yeah. So. Uh, anyway. Sorry, carry on? No, go go ahead, buddy. I, um, I, I was just... Yeah, what I was going to say was um, the way the match finished, um, obviously, uh, you know, Brett took a beating. His knee was effed. Um, Owen threw him back in the ring, uh, and then um, somehow, um, you know, Brett started to um, turn the wheels a bit. You know, and then thought, okay, fuck it, I ain't gonna tag my brother. I'm gonna go for glory, and I am gonna put on the sharpshooter. Um, yep. And obviously, he fucked up his leg. The, Tim White took one look at that and thought, nah, I'm stopping this shit. Stop the match. Um, Quebec has won. Yeah, never mind. Never, never mind, mind everything that happened. Yeah. shots, Pierre, and all <laughs> sitting on his fucking leg. Yeah. Uh, now I'm gonna stop the match. And and with that said, um. Jack Rougeau is just laughing his head off. He's just like pointing at Owen like, ha ha. <laughs> um, and Cookie, then we get the greatest picture I love, right, of Owen Hart just kicking the bottom rope. I, I fucking love when he does that shit. Ugh. He's like a proper little kid. <laughs> so... The way he kicked it, you thought he'd snap all three ropes the way he was doing it. So, oh, that, that, but a brilliant moment when he when he was just waiting for Brett to get up. and At first, he was, like, consoling him. Then and then uh, the referee would say, no, you've lost the, you've lost the match. And he was, then he thought, well, it's Brett's fault now. I thought, I thought that was really good. Oh, shit, we suck again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the way, um, obviously, you know, like you said, he was concerned. And then after, he just kicked his leg out of his leg. And then, um, I, I mean, after watching this, right, after watching this, Gates, right? Gates. You can understand because I can definitely understand why Owen went nuts on Brett. His leg was fucked. Owens was fresh, right? All he needed to do was tag him, but he went for glory with a busted fucking leg. Well, yeah, but I mean, at the same time, you know, I thought Bret Hart sold that leg injury so well in this particular match that, I mean, you can make the case that Bret Hart was just, you know, kind of the wounded animal. He was playing the wounded dog. He <laughs> saw the opportunity right there. You know, he's confident in himself as a great wrestler, and he made the move. Um, I guess I can see where Owen Hart is coming from, but he's such a little prick and such a little <laughs> spoiled motherfucking brat that, you know what, Brett, go for glory because, <laughs> you know, I, I, every time I see Owen Hart, I think of that one time, the Nation Domination, uh, or no, the, the, the Degeneration X came down and made fun of him as Nation Domination. What am I? What am I supposed to be? <laughs> I don't like a fucking road <laughs> sign. <laughs> I see where you're coming from. I see where you're coming from, Kenny, but I got to break kayfabe in this case because, God, it was just uh, rough with, with Owen Hart. Well, um, that's... Uh... But, you know, but, I mean, just um, great. You know, you talk about that, that image of him kicking the bottom rope. I thought it was just fantastic imagery, you know, Bret Hart being carried out like the wounded dog, uh, carried out of the ring, having to be assisted by all the staff around the ring and the refs, and, and Owen Hart just on that Titantron. Oh, you're gosh. selfish, brother. You could have <laughs> tagged me, but you're too damn selfish. I thought that was uh, really good. Well, what I'm about to do right now is slice and dice this Owen Hart promo in right now. 
Vince, I just got to tell you, I cannot believe what I just saw, Owen. Please tell me why. Why this despicable why, act? Why what? Why what? I don't understand. You want to know why? Bret Hart, you're nothing but a selfish person. I went in there in a tag team match for the biggest match of my life. It was a dream come true. I thought I had the best partner in the world, my own brother. But you're too selfish, like I've said all along. Your ego is too big. You only worry about yourself, Brett. Bro, you don't Owen, care about me. Unbelievable in front of your entire family. I don't family care watching. about anybody. I was concerned about myself and my whole family. The biggest opportunity in my life. I had a chance, Brett, and you stripped it away from me. You took it away from me, Brett, because you're too selfish. All you had to do was just tag me. My hand was there. Just tag me. I knew your leg was bad. I was aware of that. Just tag me. But you're too selfish. You just want to put your sharpshooter on. I could have won the match. I don't need you with a bad leg doing it, Brett. You're too damn selfish. And that's why you're sitting there with a bad leg. And that's why I kicked your leg out of your leg. Owen, let me ask you something. You've obviously cost Brett a shot at the championship. There's no way he's going to be able to compete in the Royal Rumble match coming up tonight. Don't you think that was selfish on your part? There's no selfishness in me. There's not a selfish bone in my body. He cost himself the WWF tag team belts, and he cost me, his little brother, a guy that's never had the taste of a WWF belt before. He's done it before. He doesn't care about me. He just worries about himself. I don't care about you in the Royal Rumble, Brett, because this is my opportunity. I'm in it too. I'm not worried about you getting cost the WWF belt. I'm worried about myself, and I'm gonna get that belt because I didn't get a chance to win the tag belts because of you, but I can count on myself, and I'll take the WWF belt. I'll win that Royal Rumble. Let's go back to ringside. Let, let's just go back to Vince McMahon. I mean, this promo. This promo, this guy, I don't need you with that's, a bad leg, I don't need you with a bad leg, Brett, you're too selfish, and that's why <laughs> you're there with a bad leg, and that's why I kicked your leg out of your leg. I think he went to the leg bit too soon, and that's yeah. why I kicked you in your leg, but he went to, that's why I kicked your leg out of your out leg. Of your leg. <laughs> <laughs> it's, fucking... it's, one of the best it's one of the best moments of Royal Rumble 94, though, honestly, Kenny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. And the fucking Canuck, Michael Cole of 1994, Todd Pettengill, was just like, oh, 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 Owen, don't you shut the fuck up, Todd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just let That's Owen just... speak. <laughs> fuck you, Todd. Yeah, fuck you, Todd. You're a piece of shit, and I'm glad they got rid of you. Oh, God, sh go away. Sh shit, um, Dave, we forgot fuck you, Hogan. Oh, fuck you, Hogan. Well, you that, that, we that's go. a given by now, Kenny. I, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how Cookie feels about it, but that's just a general fallback, Cookie. It's just fuck you, Hogan. That, that's <laughs> yeah, what you got to yeah. say. <laughs> uh, all right. Cookie's like, Cookie's like, Kenny, where the hell did you find these robbers? <laughs> I warned him. I warned him. <laughs> uh, all right, let's move on. Next match, IRS versus Reza Ramon. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, me chico. Hey. Um, here comes Big Daddy Rotunda. Daddy Wyatt in the building. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Now, now Gates noticed during this match, Kenny. There's a few close-ups of of, uh, of IRS, mm -hmm. and you can actually see Bray Wyatt and Bo <laughs> Dallas in these facial expressions he's doing. It's pretty funny stuff. Dude, have you seen the sister? Have you seen the sister? No, no. she no. looks. They got a sister. She, she, look, yes. she hot. She looks, she looks like uh, Bray Wyatt. Yes, she looks a mix between. <laughs> just, she looks. Like, she looks like Big Daddy Rotunda. A full-on mix between. Bo Dallas and Bray Wyatt, like a full on. She could be Sister Abigail. That's I how was just about to say, wow. she's going to be Sister Abigail. There's like, no doubt about man, that. Fucking <laughs> cookie. Bray I'll just completely clear in a moment. <laughs> she looks like Bray Wyatt. <laughs> What's the chaos? She looks like Bray Wyatt. It's the way he said it. He was like, wait, she looks like Bray Wyatt? <laughs> what is happening? Kate's like, is she hot? And Cookie's like, she looks like Bray Wyatt. Okay, well, that ends that debate. Yeah. Um, Cookie, so this was obviously a filler feud um, leading to HBK. Um, but, I mean, this all started due to IRS basically stealing Razor's gold chain. Yeah, simple. Because it's a tax cheat, probably, Razor <laughs> and So... Steal his, take his gold off him. Which uh, I think all the way through this match, I don't know, I tweeted you this about IRS being a, a face now. Yeah. A, I was just thinking you could create a tax cheat. Like have Alberto Del Rio come out to, in his limousine and say, 
I don't pay any taxes. So you could have a you could have an IRS baby face in this day and age. So have <laughs> Bo, have Bo Dallas in a shoot so, shoot. Uh, I mean, that's a great idea because yeah, we don't pay taxes in Mex America, and that just gets Bo Dallas all riled up, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna get my daddy on you. <laughs> he's backstage as an agent, so he's not far away. I'll get him out right now. Um, <laughs> Bo needs a bad gimmick. Oh god, oh, yeah. could you it, imagine Bo? Something. Could you imagine Bo as IRS? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I my god. believe you owe some taxes, Mr. Del Rio. <laughs> Oh man! So um, Gates, Jr. and Gorilla calling this match. Um, did you see a difference between um, uh, you know, McMahon and Tibiasi? Yeah, definitely. First of all, you don't have McMahon talking about going to the top row. <laughs> you, you know, you actually have like legitimate commentary. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, Gorilla Monsoon's bringing the people up, and Jr.'s bringing them down. Yeah, Jr. with the beautiful commentary about what's going on in the ring, uh, but that's part of the course for him. So yeah, definitely, definitely a difference. A lot more formal, but it was it was necessary for this match because all. Gonna say IRS is one hell of a technical wrestler, and um, Razor Ramon isn't too bad himself. And uh, speaking of the uh, speaking of the chain, the t- the gold chain gang sitting in the briefcase, I loved it. You know, IRS is not only coming for your taxes, but he's coming for your bling. So watch it, boy. <laughs> but no, he's yeah, just repossessing bling. <laughs> he's yeah. just repossessing bling. Yeah, you know what I'm wondering, guys, is uh, can you ever remember another occasion where Jr. and Gorilla were on commentary? I think this might be it. No, no, they were, they, they were, they did it. Um, obviously, it's no, Retro Roundtable, I mean, I... so it's Retro Roundtable. So we obviously do all the pay per views. They were together at Survivor Series uh, for a bit. They were together um, at uh, SummerSlam, was it as well, Cookie, for a little bit? Because um, um, so, like, yeah, it... Heenan and, and Gorilla had a run in. They were all sitting together, um, and. Uh, Occasion, or obviously, JR and Gorilla would be doing ra- um, radio WWF, um, and then they would switch in and out. So, uh, there's your answer. <laughs> um, All right, but... well, that, I mean, I, I, had, I had forgotten that, but that's a hell of a, that's a hell of a commentating team, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, JR, he, at this time, he was commentating 100 miles per hour. A hundred miles per hour. He would be, he would be like Razor going for the Irish whip. Um, IRS. He jumps it. He comes in. DDT. He would just be going so quick. Um, oh, there was and there was a lot less water maneuvers. Yeah. On this on this commentary <laughs> team. Um. So uh, after um a long 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 rest hold um which um meant I had enough time to literally take a leak, make a cup of tea, um, you know, have a little siesta, wake up, and this was so long. Like, we get a ref bump, um, suitcase uh, shot by Razor, um, back body <laughs> drop from Razor, set up Irwin for the Razor's edge, but out comes HBK with the belt shot. Perfect timing. Um, perfect timing. Irwin covers for a one, two, three for the win. Or was it? Or was it? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no, because you know a referee's decision is always final. Sometimes, and, yeah, unless kayfabe calls for otherwise. I, I hate the any inconsistencies in the way the refs manage these matches, and this was no different. Um, I, you know, I guess though this is why you know the whole saying is that Vince McMahon likes uh, simple finishers or prefers simple finishers. On a personal note, I never really liked the Razor's Edge. I thought it was kind of awkward. It took too long to set up. I've always wondered, well, Razor, why not just powerbomb the motherfucker? It seems like you're getting more impact. <laughs> so he's sitting there struggling to get, you know, Erwin R. Scheister, who's a big dude, respectively, in the in the Razor's Edge. He deserved to get knocked in the head by the fake belt. Bobby the Brain <laughs> Heenan would have loved it. <laughs> I tell you what, the build up to this match, I'd never seen Razor or anyone else other than Razor take so much Razor's edges in my life. HBK, <laughs> two HBK, right? Two Razor's edges on fucking uh, one, two, three, kid. Out comes Razor, fucks up Razor, right? And then two fucking um, Razor's edges on Razor on the fucking ramp. On like, the concrete. That was, <laughs> it, that was raw, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 once again, I mean, the Razor's Edge being a poor, uh, you know, being a poor finish, even Shawn Michaels couldn't do that skillfully. It just looked <laughs> awkward. I remember Vince McMahon it. on commentary trying to go, oh, <laughs> nobody was thinking that, Vince. Everyone it was, was thinking, the oh, safest man, yeah. Razor's Edge in the world. <laughs> yeah, you might, need to, you might need to go out there and massage his shoulder. 
<laughs> oh my god, swig of cores for the working man. Swig of cores right, for the working we'll, man. We'll do that for you, Kenny. No problem. Cheers. Oh big hell head. yeah! This is what we do with the Broken <laughs> Skull Ranch. God <laughs> damn, you know that's right. <laughs> you know that's right. <laughs> oh god. All right. Um. <laughs> Let me just get my We're breath. so sorry, Cookie. <laughs> I, we're really sorry. <laughs> what uh, time is it over there? <laughs> it's it's, it's 9.30. It's 9.30 in the morning. Uh, we have a uh, reputation to uphold, Cookie. We couldn't come on and completely stone cold sober. That would just not have worked. Uh, it's, it's, it's the weekend. It's so good. Oh, it's yeah, the weekend. Exactly. It's 5 um, o'clock in your guys' neck of the woods. As so soon as they hang down. up, Cookie's going to be like, if you ever have these fucking jobbers on, we're never coming on this show. <laughs> well, what are we doing with these? Kenny's think, uh, uh, Cookie's thinking, what are we doing with our lives, Kenny? <laughs> He's going to be like, are you going to have them on again? I'm like, yeah, they're on next show again. And they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you guys thinking? These guys are idiots. All right, let's go into one of my favorite matches in living memory. God damn. Oh, my God. This made Royal Roman for me undertaker versus big yoko <laughs> big yoko zuna casket match all right so let's build this shit up right we had survivor series we had um the survivor series classic match taker was going at it with yoko big yoko on the outside um you would take it down big yoko throw in fucking taker's head in the pole taker would just look at yoko yoko's yeah. eyes oh my days this guy looks scared than kamala he yeah. looks scared <laughs> Yoko sold the hell out of being fearful and and made and made this match so intriguing that I mean Yoko to me was always one of the more underrated champions in the history of the WWF slash E uh, and I mean in his work against Undertaker here uh, just selling absolute not not fear just terror <laughs> in this the terror. concept of this casket match um, yeah I mean awesome stuff man awesome. Uh, Cookie, I just love Retro Taker. I don't know about you, but I love it. The funeral music. Oh, yeah. Paul and Bear. The, and the way he talks and ends every sentence in a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like he's a grumpy old man. <laughs> no, that impression was deep, yeah, dude. No, he still does that now. Uh, everything <laughs> must die. Uh, <laughs> she was mine. She was mine before she was yours. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Ooh, Mr. a blender. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. SummerSlam 91 wedding oh, match made in heaven. Um, so, Yoko tries a cheap shot. Take um, on Taker, but Taker just takes him down straight away. Um, then all hell fucking breaks loose, Dave. All hell breaks loose. I swear, he throws it outside, yeah? And then WWF Royal Rumble becomes ECW real quick. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right, so we've got half, one third of the members of the Royal Rumble are going to all come down now, <laughs> beat the shit out of Undertaker, and make damn sure he doesn't, not only doesn't win this match, but is actually apparently killed. But how <laughs> fucking, how fucking fresh. Was Jeff Jarrett looking with spurs <laughs> oh. on the back of the boots and the red, red, red bandana? Oh yeah, oh, my Jeff God. Jarrett was the epitome of swag in this whole segment. I mean, there, it's 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 craziness going on. I mean, and you wonder, well, this is the only way Yoko's going to actually prevail in this match in this environment, and just yeah, I mean, it, it was it was very ECW ish and just like holy shit, how many guys could you possibly, you know, how many is it going to take to put this guy down? And it's not really until they knock out Paul Bearer and open the urn with all the green smoke coming out and Undertaker's power dissipates to God knows where. Oh, and that's dude. the end of Undertaker. <laughs> How about dude, Paul it's... Bearer kicking Mr. Fuji? Oh, that was I did that not was know wicked. he could lift his leg to that degree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I tell you what. As soon as they went outside before the guys came, it was the amount of chairs and fucking... I'd never seen take... I'd never seen so much chair shots in the early 90s in my life. Like, just chair shots galore. And, um... <laughs> How'd you like unprotected chair shots to the head? Oh. Things that you don't see nowadays at all. And then just whack. And like, wow. You know, that, that had to feel good. I mean, this went real quick because it was like after the DDT, Taker just throws Yoko into the cast. He's like, I've had enough of this shit. Fucking DDT, I'm just going to throw you right in there. And then Bam Bam comes from nowhere. Guys, a sh quick shout on, on the guys, all the guys that came down, right? Now just shout the names. I Crush. Name Bam. One. Tenru. Two. Uh, Double J. Adam three, Bomb. Four. Adam, Adam Bomb, Bomb. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jeff Jarrett, Crush. Uh, yeah, we got that. We got Crush already? Yeah. We're head both of the head, 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 head shrinkers. Yeah, head shrinkers, yeah, yeah. Both of the head shrinkers were there. Five. 
five. You got... Should Tenru came with somebody? Yes, yes. <laughs> Can you remember the, the guy's name? <laughs> Yeah, Kabuki. Okay. Kabuki, Kabuki was there. Kabuki. One Kabuki. More. One more. One more. Oh, Diesel. Yes, yes. Big Daddy. Big Daddy. Cool. It was the. This is. Look, this. Yeah, this ain't that's even. That's right. Yeah. That's right. This isn't even like with Double J. This wasn't even fucking country singer Double J. This was Smoky Mountain Double J. He looked kitted out in the red like Smoky Mountain champion Double J, like Northern Lights America Dude. champion Double, Double J. J. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Double god. Double J was styling and freaking profiling it out there, man. Was. This was, was before Tennessee was the, Lee. He was the ring general out there too because this whole segment he was making sure that all the spots got in. He was, you know, he was the one who was directing them. Okay, now you all got your little high spots and everyone saw you get your hits in. Now get Undertaker in the casket. Uh, Jeff Jarrett was was fantastic. He just sat on off the top rope, just yeah, just making movements like you go there, you do this, get the urine. <laughs> he was just doing everything. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, are you, are you, uh... um but uh, exactly. T- yeah. Um, exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. Uh, Taker takes some punishment, man. Like, bam, bam, diving headbutt times two. Head shringlers, headbutt. Shot in the head by the urine. Takes him down. This guy's fighting for his life. Um, Then the aftermath. The aftermath. What did you guys think of this? Because as a kid, this freaked the hell out of me. Oh, yeah. I, I thought this was brilliant in 1994 as a kid. Watching it now, you're like, you, you, you shiver. With embarrassment. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what is this it's cheesy still shit? better than the shit Bray Wyatt's been pulling lately. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. yeah. They actually had no. the, the balls to fucking levitate Taker. Like... <laughs> no, 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 no shivers and embarrassment. When when Undertaker, when the lights went out, and on the Titan Tron, Undertaker's there, and he's got his... First of all, Undertaker, you know, like you said earlier, Kenny... You know, uh, funeral parlor Undertaker was a scary motherfucker. When they when they put the Titan Tron on him, and you know his hair's down over his face, and when he turns his head and opens his eyes, it looks like Night of the Living Dead shit. I thought, like I thought it was fantastic. I got chills watching it. Like Dave said, it's better than the shit that the fucking Wyatt family does these days. Way better. But, but when you watch it back now, though, when it when the the Tron comes on. It's like, how big is this casket? Actually, yeah. <laughs> double wide and double deep. And it's we have zo- to address. And it's in on his face as well. <laughs> yeah, there is there is a camera on the casket. We do have to address that straight away. Suspend, he's got, he's got suspend la- disbelief. He's got a lounge in the casket. He's probably got a keg uh, in the this- casket. Dude, that casket looked kitted out. He was like Q Hefner in there. That would, shit looks would, fucking. I'm like, I'm, I'm just gonna hang out in the casket. Fuck the rest of this. I love thing. the term kitted out, by the way. Yeah, it's, awesome. it's, it's, it's swag over here to Kenny kitted out. I love that. Now, you guys, have you heard who uh, the rumor is who actually portrayed Undertaker levitating? I no, no. heard Marty Jannetty. Yeah, Marty Jannetty. Are you dressed. serious? <laughs> that, that, that's the craziest thing out what? of all of this. Is that Marty <laughs> Jannetty? He's what? like half of Undertaker's size, and all right, whatever. That Gates, kind of, is that like, kind of... Gates is like, am I drinking too much? Did I just hear that? <laughs> what? That's, uh, Cookie's got it right. I mean, that's that's who the rumor is that would portrayed the levitating Undertaker. Then, yeah, Undertaker, I will not rest in peace. And then he dies. Oh. <laughs> and he dies. At least till SummerSlam. At least till SummerSlam. Hey, guys, did. Undertaker died. Dude. And it was the, come on the Titan Tron thing was so great like the way the, the electricity and then the, as the Titan Tron's going up Taker comes up and you can barely see him this is the great thing like the crowd know what's going on so the crowd's popping like crazy Ted Tibiasi is going on nuts like I can't believe we're seeing McMahon I don't believe it, was it. Awesome. he's going crazy like Ted sold it it was legitimately awesome. Yeah, I mean, and, and I mean, I remember afterwards. I remember all the Undertaker sightings for months leading up to SummerSlam. <laughs> I'm like, what is he fucking Elvis now? What is this shit? <laughs> and it had to be Ted DiBiase as well. That's what the great thing is. The, yeah. the story continuing with you know him being there and him being the first guy bringing him in and so on and so on. Um, but yeah, don't worry. We will be attacking Survivor Series '94 with special guest Chuck Norris, making sure all these fucking Canucks don't come down again. That's right. Chuck, <laughs> Chuck, Jeff Jarrett, Chuck Norris. The Chuck Norris, yeah, spin kick to the abdomen of Double J, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, all right. Um, uh, that's the end of that match. Taker dies, people, and we won't see him again for um. Yeah, he buy- He's like, he's like, fuck WrestleMania, fuck, fuck WrestleMania, fuck um, what's it called um, 
King of the Ring. You know, I'm coming back at SummerSlam. I'm taking a break. Yeah, That's wasn't it. Wrestle, WrestleMania 10 was like one of the few manias that Taker missed. Isn't that correct? And that was one of the best manias, you know, and he missed it. It was. Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah. We'll uh, to that next month, I guess. Yeah, but, we will. We will. Um, but right about now, we're going to get to a break. Um, you know, uh, we're going to go to our sponsors, and it's not DraftKings.com. Um, but we're going to go to our sponsors. <laughs> it's a fan Or, sh- or Sherry's Berries. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, there yeah. you go. But um, it, it's going to be from, obviously, VOC Nation. Um, but we'll be back with the Royal Rumble itself. So don't you miss it. The mouth of the Sal Jimmy Hart. Ned Carrier has many great products and services to increase your bottom line. Be sure to ask your Ned Carrier representative about our hosted PBX. Call Ned Carrier today for a free analysis of your phone bills. 877-255-7733. That's right. 877-255-7733. Call now. Let's get it out. It happens every morning. You watch wrong and then you react. 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time, every single Monday, join Tony and Sarah, Harry Rogers, and Jimmy Christopher for the Raw Reaction Worldwide on the VOC Nation. The most polarizing personalities worldwide. This is the VOC Nation. And we're back, Retro Roundtable, episode 15. It's your boy, Kenny Killer, hanging out with my partner in crime on a Saturday. That's right, the cookie cutter podcaster himself, Mr. <laughs> Michael Cook. And also, my brothers from stateside, Attitude of Aggression's own, Dave and Gates. Uh, so what we're going to do right now is we're oh, going to yeah. go Neither into way. the Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble match, 1994. Right, so... Here we go. We start the Royal Rumble with Big Papa Pump, Freakzilla, <laughs> Scott Steiner, um, and Samu from the Head Shrinklers. Um, and then after that, what do we get? Who comes out next, Cookie? Rick Steiner. Rick Steiner, the dog face Kremlin. <laughs> I would be, listen, basically, um, Gates, what they're saying is Rick Steiner's ugly as fuck. That's why they gave, that's basically what they're saying. He is the dog face Kremlin. <laughs> I yeah, he, he like is. <laughs> Please, I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Hello? Good, yeah, I was saying, um, I wouldn't want a nickname like that. Oh no, no, no! I'm, I'm sorry. I thought I, I, I thought Scotty was. I thought Scotty was 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 in the midst of saying so. That's why. No, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know. Rick Steiner wasn't an ugly son of a bitch, though. You know, he always had the clean cut going on. He was always edged up very nicely. And you know, these guys were always swagging out or kitted up themselves, the Steiner brothers, with the matching onesies. But yeah, basically, they are kind of saying, you know, you're the dog face gremlin, and fuck, that's a face only your mother could love. <laughs> oh, I see. Where I see. I see where you're coming from. Oh. And I, you know, I, I don't personally think that myself <laughs> um dave um um with this now samu right ducks a double clothesline and launches himself mick foley style at the ropes and nearly takes his own head off eliminates himself that's a good move always <laughs> oh, good strategy dude. to eliminate yourself dude he literally nearly takes his own head off what the hell like yeah. oh god yeah. um it's an epic moment <laughs> Um, uh, Cookie out next we had number four was Quang 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 Yeah Yeah <laughs> Savio, Savio Vega can blow green mist Wow That's what I'm that, saying that, That's amazing He just comes in He's like yeah Fuck anything else Just green smith Green mist yeah, to your Rick, dome Rick <laughs> Rick, 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 <laughs> Rick starts looking uglier real fast Because he's got green mist all in his face I said jerry this motherfucking ass <laughs> I like that. I, I just mooded you, I just mooted you, Rick. So. <laughs> oh man! All right, number five was Owen. Owen came out number five, oh, fucking yeah. loving it. He was loving it, taking in all the glory. Um, oh, number he's top s- of the world at this point. Yeah. <laughs> number six, uh, we had Bart Gun. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about your damn luck, Bart. Um, soon we're going to see your ass get knocked out by Butterbean. <laughs> um, but yeah, we had Bart Gunn. Uh, then seven, seven, out comes Diesel. Diesel comes yeah. out, Cookie, and he just eliminates all these fuckers. Everybody, everybody. And then he just, one at a time, come on, I'll get you. Bob Ackland, Billy Gunn. Oh man, he starts off with Bart, then he goes for Scotty, um, and then fucking he goes for Owen Hart and Gates. Owen Hart at, outside the ring looked livid. 
Oh, it, I mean, oh. It, it only just turned, and it, it was in about five minutes. <laughs> Here's your oh. heel turn. <laughs> Here's your spotlight. All your heat gone. Squashed by fucking fucking XE. Uh, he looked like he was gonna give like a spinning heel kick to the ref outside the ring. <laughs> what do you mean I'm eliminated? <laughs> oh god. Um <clears throat> But yeah, so Diesel um eliminates loads of these guys. Number eight, Bob Backen comes running in, trying to go for the legs of um Diesel, gets dumped out. Which, Little I, did- which I appreciated, man. I mean, yeah. Bob Backlund. I, Bob Backlund is not just some fucking joke. The guy can actually <laughs> wrestle. He was, you know, people might think he's a joke, but over here in the states, I believe he even ran for Congress. So I mean, the guy's, you know, serious dude. He tries to wrestle technically with Diesel. Hey, he's not hey. just because a lot of these guys, real quickly, Dave. They're they're going at Diesel just like fucking idiots. The thing I <laughs> think I hate about Royal Rumbles is it's just some of the poorest storytelling porous wrestling just a bunch of guys kind of standing around and punching each other but bob backland comes down he notices the size advantage he tries going for the legs um at least he tries to tell a story well, he tries to tell a story the funny thing about it is backland lasts longer against these here than he did in the when he had the title <laughs> and diesel took it from him Dude. you know it's like well maybe you should have learned something that was my next thing little did we know you know a year from now diesel becomes jump and pins him like eight seconds eight seconds Eight seconds. One oh. jackknife powerbomb done. See you later. Done. Thanks, Mr. Backlund. Bye bye. <laughs> kudos to ba- kudos to Backlund trying to make it professional, trying to keep it classy. He tried. I know, and his last Royal Rumble was epic. Like, you know, his last efforts was epic. He was in there for bloody ages. And then now, you know, just oh, yeah. yeah. The man can wrestle. The man can wrestle. That chicken wing, man, the dreaded chicken wing. You're going down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, right. What <laughs> Uh, after that, we had um, uh, Billy Gunn come up. Mr. Kipsop came out, um, got eliminated by Diesel. Virgil, this Canuck. Where's listen, right? Before you get to your story, um, um, Dave, on Virgil. Virgil, I keep telling you every episode, you owe me ten bucks. It's two years now, right? When I saw you in fucking New York, right, in this in that subway, right? It said W W M F superstar. It's WWE superstar. I want my ten dollars back, right? I want it back. So, um, uh, you actually anyway, paid him ten dollars, dude. Listen, don't even get me started, please. I feel ashamed. Um, <laughs> Dave, run with your story on Virgil, please. <laughs> oh Jesus! You know, Virgil. I, I reached out to Virgil to see if he wanted to be a guest on the podcast, and his email response to me was, "How much, bro?" And I'm like. <laughs> Dude, uh, I'm like, uh, we don't make money on the podcast yet, you know, and then he wants to be like an ambassador to the show and uh, any money he sees, son. And I'm like, oh, OK, I'm, I guess I'm Xavier now. I'm his son. Uh, so, yeah, that was kind of when, when I kind of informed Virgil. Well, that's an interesting concept. Uh, but, you know, just so you know, I'm an attorney. So if we're going to negotiate this, let's negotiate it. And I haven't heard back from Virgil since then. So. <laughs> Once shit got real, I think uh, I, I think Vincent, I mean Virgil or whatever, <laughs> yeah, he just decided, you know, I don't need that kind of hassle. Yeah, yeah I well, get my fuck, I'll get my fuck money somewhere else. I'll just steal money from Kenny. You know, <laughs> and hold it. For you. you got interest going on that thing, buddy. No, mm-hmm. I, I appreciate I appreciate Kenny throwing a little fuck money towards Virgil. <laughs> I was gonna throw fuck money to him, but you know, never mind now. Shit. Oh, right. Well, hopefully, hopefully your conversation with him lasted longer than his, you know, his time in the Royal Rumble here, thirty-two seconds. Um, it, out it next... actually probably did. <laughs> out next came Savage, number eleven. Savage came out, and the crowd, oh yeah, lost their shit. My they man, Randy Savage, Savage, dude. Savage quells the diesel uprising pretty quickly here. So that put a stop to that. We did so fucking... Randy Savage, the consummate pro, he comes out, the freaking yellow streamers, the yellow cowboy hat, decked out in the pink. Yeah, quells diesel. He has a good little exchange with Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett actually kind of puts the fucking boots to Randy Savage. <laughs> yeah. Comes in next. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and then, uh, of course, Randy Savage eliminates uh, Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, but then all good things must end. All rivers have to bend. Then freaking Kona Crush, the dreaded crush, comes out, and he and Diesel just kind of lay waste to Savage. Oh, you know, yeah. Savage Savage comes out as such a house house of fire. I feel like he deserved a little better of elimination, you know, for being a legend and who he is, than Crush just kind of carrying him out like a dead man and dropping him. That was just the most embarrassing elimination of the whole Rumble. Well, at least it was better than his bloody 92 elimination where he just sees Jake oh, and goes absolutely what? crazy and just jump out of the ring. 
Yeah, like I, I momentarily went retarded and forgot the rules. I'm gonna fucking. Uh, oh no! But not, or 93, where he tries to oh, pin Yokozuna. No, 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 93. I'm gonna pinfall. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pinfall Yokozuna. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you say the oh, 90, 92. Yeah, 93 was just rough, man. But anyways, I yeah, I, I remember watching this as a kid because I was, I'm a still a huge Randy Savage mark. That was my favorite wrestler growing up, and I was just like, really. Really? You just <laughs> drop him out of the ring? You couldn't have kept him in a few extra rounds? Come on, man. Come Sick on, heads, man. if you just didn't notice that he quoted the ball bag. Um, really? <laughs> Wait, what now? Uh, don't forget the ball bag on our show is, called, is The Miz. The Miz is the, the ball Miz. bag. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the Miz. Yeah. Um, Cookie, then we get to a little insert bit where fucking Tenru Akabuki is just taking out Lex. Oh, the hired, the hired henchman from Mr. Foji. K- kicking crap out of Lex Loga. Oh man! <laughs> and I never had superstars. I never had cable, so I wondered who the fuck was Kabuki. I was like, who's this? Who's this random Canuck? Kenny, Can those remember... of us who had superstars are wondering who the fuck is this guy. <laughs> yeah, because I don't think they were on TV up to that point. But I, I can only remember Tenro from WrestleMania Seven against Demolition. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Katili, Katili. <laughs> I love that bit we had in the fucking um, when he has uh, him and um, Regis. <laughs> he's trying to fucking talk to Regis, and he's like, "Oh, Katili, Katili." Kati well, I believe it's, uh, I believe it's Tenru's last match tomorrow as well. So it's uh, well, well timing. Yeah, Okada, 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 Okada is gonna be. I don't. Okada, he's he's gonna get a, a match out of him. He has to because Tenru was like sixty odd. <laughs> he's, he's got to try and get a good match out of here. Um, all right, let's continue with this. Um, like you said, Jeff Jarrett came out next. Uh, then we had Kona Crush dumps out Savage. Um, <clears throat> then we had Dunk the Clown coming out. He gets oh, yeah. the, the, oh, right. <laughs> and you get fucking. You get. You can't fucking, what's his What's his name? Dink. Dink. <laughs> Dink the Clown. Oh, you know this... Dink. You know Dink was just slaying Poon. Yeah. You know, Dink was just slaying Poon in Rhode Island that night. <laughs> that little son of a bitch was just there for the bitches. He was like, point me to the cat. Um, <laughs> it was the, it's just the way he was running down the aisle every time I see it. He, I was, ready for, he was ready for something. Mean, how can you be more of a stud? <laughs> and he has this look on his face like he's constantly got this smiling look on his face. The plane, the plane, <laughs> the plane, the plane. <laughs> <laughs> oh my stomach i can't i can't do it <laughs> back when the oh, dink would have been a nice little duo <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> don't stop it dink and spike dudley together that would have been great <laughs> the plane. The plane, boss. <laughs> all right um so um <laughs> then we had uh mabel um big daddy v uh rest in peace he come out Yes, sir. Got eliminated by like, like six guys. Fucking. Um, then we had Sparky Plug, Hardcore Holly. Dude, real Hardcore quick, Holly. real quick. Mabel was just a fucking massive human being. I mean, I grew up <laughs> with him, of course, as, uh, what was it, uh, Viscera during the Attitude Era. Mm-hmm. The, the the corporation, so but you got the good version. Yeah, of I got. Him but I mean, no. But I mean, he comes out. I mean, and you know, Crush and freaking uh, uh, Diesel are not small fucking dudes by any stretch of the imagination. And it's just like I just had a moment. I just had a moment mm-hmm. where it's like, oh, that's right. This guy was just fucking massive. It, it, I, I certainly wish he had lasted a little longer than fucking Mo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. The thing is with Mabel, though. Um, I mean, yeah, like like Dave said, you know, you got a good Mabel. We got nineteen ninety five King of the Ring Mabel. Like <laughs> men you on know a mission. Killing <laughs> yeah. Diesel nearly. <laughs> uh, um, so we had Sparky Plug, as they called him then. Fuck's sake, um, Hardcore Holly. <laughs> um, I got the I got the good one there too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A yeah. lot of the good ones. I grew up yeah. with a good version there too. But we had HBK. We had HBK. It's been. Um, so HBK comes out number eighteen, right? Um, HBK comes out like literally strikes a deal with Diesel straight away, and then ends up fucking helping throwing him out. Like you cheeky bastard. Oh. <laughs> yeah, helping him with uh, multiple guys getting rid of Diesel. And Sean, I think it's the last guy to come in at the very end just to get that last little nudge over the top rope. See it, Big Daddy Cool. Thanks for uh, playing. Now, Cookie, the best thing about this was that I think on the back of this um, uh, this uh, performance and the fact that when Diesel walked out, they were chanting, Diesel, Diesel, they went for the face turn. Oh, definitely. I mean, I'm sure Vince was just watching when he was walking past going, I'll just note his name down. 
Possible contender? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because a year later he wins the title. Like, yeah. Vince he wins... was thinking, I got a little more fuck money on the way. Yeah. Just write this down, a little more fuck money coming my way. It's like, okay, the next 10 months he could just win every title. Fuck it. <laughs> next 10 Why months not? he could win the IC, tag titles. Yeah, fucking give him the mate, just give him everything. You know? Yeah. Why not? Um, I don't know if you can hear my daughter crying in the background. Um, you know, she's, uh, yeah, she's got some lungs on her. She's crying. Um, it's all right. Daddy will be with you in a sec. All right. I'd be so... crying. I'd be crying too if this was going on at earshot. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So after Shawn Michaels, we had Mo. Uh, then we had oh, fuck. fucking Greg the Hammer Valentine. Where the oh, hell yeah. did he come from? I don't know. They drug him out of mothballs and say, get in there, Greg. We need to. <laughs> Bastion Booger can't make it, so Greg, get yeah. your ass in there. Hey, it's better to have Greg the Hammer Valentine than Bastion, Bastion Booger. Booger. Fucking consummate yeah. professional. Don't hate on the legend, yeah. man. To that. Don't fucking hate on at the home, legend. At home, sco- um, at home, just stroking his icy title, fucking listening to rhythm and blues, thinking, oh, shit, what am I going to do tonight? Then he gets a phone call from Vince. Saying, come on, man, you got one more shot. Do you need a little mountain. fuck money? Do you need a little fuck money, Greg? <laughs> you stick up there in uh, Seattle where it only rains. Come on, get out of the fucking sunlight. Come on, let's go. Oh, uh, man. Uh, after that, we got Tatanka. Um, uh, <laughs> then out comes the great Kabuki. Uh, <laughs> God, Kabuki. God damn. Uh, Lex Luger comes out. Massive, massive pop. Um, uh, yeah, he decides to like fucking have a f- proper war with Kabuki. Um, throws, he throws him out. Uh, Luka throws out, quick. throws out HBK as well. Then Tenru comes out, 24. Um, 25 meant to be bashed in Booger, but he was unable to make it because he couldn't finish his uh fucking cow carcass yet. Yeah, he's got a little so... sick. <laughs> yeah, got a little tummy ache. Yeah, but I liked uh, Vince's reaction to that, going, "Oh, that must have been Brett." That must have been Brett. Oh, it had shit. to be Brett. Uh, it has uh, to be Kane. That has to be Kane. Oh, it's, no. it's Kane. <laughs> it's Taz. <laughs> um, and um, after Lex Luger, Tenru comes out. Uh, it starts just chopping everyone. You can hear that shit so loud. Oh, man. Um, sorry, I think I, I said Tenru twice. Uh, but you, uh, you, you said Tenru. I backtrack right. a little bit. 26 was um, Rick the Modern Martel. Again, blast from the past. Eric. Um, I, oh, I love that theme song. Uh, did you guys know that um, his theme song was um, built up into Val Venus' theme song? No, I did not. And I am Listen a fucking closely. massive fan of Martell and Venus. So that is a nice little factoid. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Jim Johnson Gotta go back is at his best. <laughs> um, 27. Bret Hart comes out. They kept the suspense so well with this. Like, you know, it went... And then they're like, who is it? Who is it? And I can hear I can hear TMIC going, Who the fuck is it already? <laughs> <laughs> I think he actually said that, Kenny. Who the fuck is it? <laughs> uh, Brett comes out. Crowd lose their shit again. Um, yeah, Brent is selling the knee immaculately the whole walk down to the ring. Just like, wow, this guy is just, he, he needs an Oscar for this performance. This is epic. I mean, today, today we just run into the ring. Like, <laughs> yeah, unless unless it was Ziggler. Ziggler would sell it really well, but everybody right. else would just be like, oh, oh, yeah, that's right, I have a knee injury. Yeah. Never mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then he'd go down and grab his shoulder instead. Oh, it's a knee injury? Shit, sorry, I forgot. I'll I, I tell you who always sprints to the ring and rumbles. Fucking Billy Gunn. Take your time, mate. Every time he sprints to the ring. He's got ass to get to. <laughs> When you got I asked to get to, you ain't worrying about your placing in the rumble. Yeah. All right. Now this Must is. Must have been um... ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Um. Oh shit. Yeah. I haven't even read that yet. I I got a little thing. I got a thing saying that. Um. Yeah. That's. I forgot about that shit. I heard um someone like put that out that um he got fired and I was yeah. meant to go and read the shit and I haven't even read about it yet. So uh. Not he got busted for PEDs or something oh, and they said god, see you later, man. Mr. Ass. Oh man, you fucked it up, man. Um, anywho, uh, 28 was Fatu. Head shrinker Fatu, wait up. Head shrinker Fatu. Not Viagra's not a not, PED. <laughs> not not got to make a change, Fatu. This is head shrinker Fatu. Um, then 29, right? This I fucking love. Marty Ginetti comes out. As he is fucking strolling down, he's um, just like saying, you know what, fuck this. I don't really want to high five all the fans because I got HBK to get to. HBK is in the ring, just like. Just waiting, you know, catching his breath until Marty Jannetty just just dons the ropes and that is it. HBK sprints like fucking Usain Bolt towards him, and they are just 
n- nailing each other like yep. proper full on. I am fucking gonna kill you. Yeah, there, G- uh, G- Gates had asked me when he saw that. He says, "Was there real heat between these guys?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, there was some real heat between these guys. There was a, a fist fight or two, I think." And uh, you could tell that this this was not just a work going on between these two. Oh man, uh, it was great. And then uh, fucking number thirty was Adam Bomb. Vince, what the fuck were you smoking when you came up with these names? Adam, Adam Bomb. Bomb. With Harvey, oh. Harvey Whippleman as the manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Harvey Whippleman. Yeah. Doctor Harvey Whippleman. He, came up with he, did, he, did, he did so well with Sid, and so it's like, yeah, let's put him with Adam Bomb. Yeah, that'll work. Oh, yeah, yeah, he did so well. Sid is straight jacket material. That's what. That's what Monsoon. That's Monsoon's words, not mine. So, uh, yeah, Udi, please don't get me. Um, all right. So the final four we had Luger. Um, Head Shrinker Fatu, Brett and HBK Double Irish Rip to the corner um, And Lex and Brett um, Back body drop, both of Fatu and HBK Out the ring, then they both go at it Eliminate each other Co-winners uh, Cookie, they did this so perfectly um, To the point where they just obviously you know, Had to give them an Oscar Oh, it was really good and Well timed for them, for it to actually work As well, imagine if <laughs> Luger got stuck on the top rope And Brett fell <laughs> yeah, oh. but one of the one of the cameramen needs to have his job reevaluated. Where was he at? Where was he at get on that position. side of the ring? Yeah, yeah, get get in position, mate. What yeah. are you doing? We've got the angle that's going to show it inconclusive. Uh, oh yeah, you can't see <laughs> shit, man. Uh, this next this next clip will is definitely going to show it. No, <laughs> <laughs> not really. It's definitely going to show you nothing at all. But I, I agree with Cookie. I mean, th- these guys. Just to pull that move off in that moment and time it so well where both guys hit at the as close to the exact same time as you could get it, it's like wow, that's that's fantastic. Phenomenal work by uh, by Brett and Lex in that in that moment. <laughs> All right, so first time ever we get co winners. Um and uh, obviously to set this up, what happened is they had a coin toss which uh, <laughs> Cookie tweeted out <laughs> um between um Luger and um Brett. Um and then obviously Luger won, so which meant that um he got to face Yoko first, which meant Brett had to face Owen uh in the first match and then uh the winner of Lex Luger and Yoko would face Bret Hart to determine the WWF champion. And that was the Royal Rumble 1994. Um right, so pay per view rating guys, cookie. Oh I'll give it a six out of ten. I would I wouldn't say it was one of the best, but I thought I thought it was one of those where it Vince McMahon was wanting to know who did they like better, Luger or Brett. So, mm. and and there seemed to be at the end a little bit, a few more boos for Luger. Um, so I'm sure he was noting all this down. <laughs> yeah, um, Gates, uh, your rating, please. Um, I gotta go a little higher than uh, than six out of ten. I liked the, uh, I liked uh, the match with uh, you know Bret Hart and Owen Hart. That was a great angle. I, you know, even today watching the Undertaker thing, uh, you know, call me cheesy, whatever. I freaking got chills watching that. Uh, I'll go ahead and give this uh, an 8 out of 10. And I, I, you know, I like it. This was Randy Savage's last Royal Rumble, so I kind of have a soft spot there. That's where I'm standing. Okay. Uh, Dave? Um, I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10. I thought the uh, the Rumble match itself was, was very good. Uh, you got to see the emergence of certain superstars like Diesel really came into his own this match. Uh, you got to see just how, you know, just what a ring general Shawn Michaels could really be in this kind of environment. Brett, and, and I agree with Cookie that I think Vince was really gauging who are these guys more behind. Are they behind Brett? Are they behind Lex? Because, yeah, like we said earlier, Vince wasn't really sure. This is just, you know, immediately after Hogan has bolted and left WWE, uh, Vince knew he had to put, he had to put his chips behind somebody. Somebody's got to, you know, be the one to pull this this uh, this carriage. And he knew. He, he, I think he originally thought it was going to be Lex, but the fans just never really gravitated to Lex like he wanted. They always seemed to be moving in Brett's direction. And at the end of the Rumble, Brett, yeah, I agree with Cookie. Brett seemed to have a lot more uh, support. More fans, you know, were kind of going along with him and his belief that he won the match. So. I, I thought all things aside, it, it was a solid Royal Rumble. And, yeah, I mean, the Undertaker match was interesting. Uh, not the greatest casket match, and they never are. Uh, the great, the greatest casket ever, no doubt about that, but the greatest mm-hmm. casket match, not so much. Um, 
But yeah, I'd say it's seven and a half out of ten. Okay, all right. I'm I'm gonna go to um, Cookie with this one. Uh, Pay per view MVP, please. Uh, I'll probably go with Brett because he, as you say, he sold that knee perfectly and straight to the because that was almost at the beginning of the pay per view and he still had that injury right at the end and he was he was the star of that show. I thought. Uh, Dave, uh, who is your M- uh, pay per view MVP? Uh, I mean. Brett would probably be the safe choice. I would probably, just to be a little different, go with Diesel for the performance mm-hmm. he put down at the Royal Rumble. Okay. Uh, Gates? Uh, the Poon Slayer, Jack Treetop <laughs> Tunney. Jack Treetop Tunney, as I like to call him. Um, you know, a lot. it's a common misconception. They think he was talking uh, to Fink about the match. No, he was, he was really saying, you know, I got the bar. I got the bitches. The limo's in the back. Get this done so we can get out of here. Jack, <laughs> the Poon Slayer, Treetop Tunny, MVP of the 94 Royal Rumble. We got to get some Poon. <laughs> we got to get to the Poon, bro. Finish this. I don't care who wins. I don't care. I got the limo in the back. Woo! We got a style and profile in Rhode Island, cowboy. Well, that, that, that explained <laughs> Howard Finkel's uh, hesitation when he was announcing. He went, uh, what, like, how, how many bitches? <laughs> <laughs> As Jonah Hill likes to say, I am the king of pan and vaj. <laughs> um, all right. So um, <laughs> match of the night, then, Gates. Who was your match of the, what was your match of the night? Oh, it's 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 Undertaker and Yokozuna, uh, just for the novelty of it. Uh, you know, just for uh, Jeff Jarrett coming down, coming down, kitted out. Uh, Undertaker <laughs> actually dying, according to kayfabe, and you know, levitating out of the casket. The whole thing was fantastic. Um, you know, anybody who watches this Royal Rumble uh, back these days, that's what they're remembering. So uh, I say Undertaker and okay. uh, Yokozuna. Dave. Uh, match of the night uh, for me, definitely Brett and Owen versus the Quebecers. Uh, you know, I mean, just for what that match led to and, and the significance of the heel turn of Owen Hart uh, and, and what it led to. I mean, that match, without that, Bret Hart's not selling that knee injury. Uh, it, it, it lessens the impact of the Rumble itself. So, yeah, I think that was my the best match of the night, in my opinion. Okay, Cookie. Yeah, I'll have to agree. The, uh, Owen Hart and Bret Hart versus the Quebecers, it was just... And it was just the start of a feud that lasted up to 97. <laughs> I know. I yeah, know. Exactly. Oh, God. Before they buried the hatchet. Um, all right. So right about now, time is, people, you know what time it is. It is time for Cookie's Top 5. Cookie, what have you got for us this time? Uh, well, it'll be top... F- uh, let's see. Uh, top 5 faces of 1994. Mm-hmm. Uh, at first, um, I'll go with uh, uh, Lex Luger. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he started off well in '93, but it just seemed as though we just didn't know what the hell to do with him. Uh, num- number three, I'd go with um, Diesel at the end, because him finally having had enough with Shawn Michaels at the end uh, that was perfect perfect uh, I think I'll just go straight straight to number one Would I, well number two would be Macho Man um, he, he should freak out freak out yeah <laughs> he deserved a lot better in 1994 but his feud with, with Crush uh was really really good. I like I like that. But he he deserved better instead of being on the commentary team for uh, most most of that year. And uh, number one, Bret Hart, because his matches at SummerSlam in the cage and and selling even the uh, Bob Backlund chicken wing at, at, at the at Survivor Series. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> chicken wing of death. <laughs> oh yeah. Better than Braun Strowman's Hug of Doom, that's for oh, sure. <laughs> hug of Doom, I love that. Oh god. And there you have it, people. That is the end of the Retro's Round Table, episode fifteen, or Rumble Ninety Four. Man, I've had fun and we're gonna do it all over again next month. That's right, Retro Round Table episode sixteen, WrestleMania ten, with these guys. Uh, um Attitude of Aggression, Dave and Gates. They are back, that's right. So it's gonna be more antics, more banter going along. Um 
You know we'll be drinking, Kenny. That's all I got to say. You know we won't be sober, so. (laughs) Well, I'll I'll have to get my Jack Daniels and cock out. Yeah. There we go. I knew (laughs) Cookie had it in him. Cookie, all right. All right, right. I'm I'm going to join the club now. I'm going to join the club. I'm going to have to rock out with something. Maybe I'll rock out with some, you know, uh, Corona, you know, and then maybe have a little chaser on the side. We're all um, going to be kitted out. <laughs> God <laughs> damn, you know that, right? <laughs> That's his new word now. You're going to run around and be like, yeah, I kitted my shit out, man. That's how I roll. I kit my shit out. <laughs> I just want to know, is Hershey the Wonder Dog and me invited to this party next month, guys? <laughs> Steve Austin, you need to, you've, been, you've been staying at Dave's house for too long. You've overstayed your welcome. It's abrasive. you got to leave. Steve. God damn, you know that's it, right. Please, we appreciate it. goddamn you fucking you. mass. <laughs> He's goddamn fucking mass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I'd like to thank Dave and Gates uh, for coming on the show. Please let the people know where they can find you and the show on the Twitter. Uh, Kenny, thank you so much for having us on the show. Cookie, thank you for uh, putting up with us for the first time. We certainly appreciate your patience. So, uh, <laughs> uh, if if you want to email the show or ask us any questions, send in any comments, you can reach us at attitudeofaggression at gmail dot com. Uh, we have a website, www.attitudeofaggression.com. All the podcast episodes are there. You can stream them live if you want to do that. On Facebook, facebook.com slash attitudeofaggression. Please hit the like button because we love the likes. We like you the likes. Yeah. On Twitter, we are at attitudeag. That is at attitude A-G-G. We're also on Instagram at attitudeofaggression. Uh, that pretty much sums up all the ways you can find us on the interwebs and harass the hell out of us because we like being harassed. <laughs> Gates especially likes it if you sexually harass him. I, I'm a married guy, so not so much. But you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, people. So make sure you stay with us uh, longer than Ludwig Borg or stay with WWF. Make sure you stay with us next month. Uh, WrestleMania 10 is going to be one hell of a ride. So don't you miss it, brother. Well, yeah, let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> <laughs>